Got to start talking about COVID. Uh, and the question now, as far as the state of Nevada is concerned, will the state of Nevada be shutting down again? Well, here's what I can tell you. Again, another 28 new deaths have been reported. More than 1,100 cases of the coronavirus also reported in the state of Nevada yesterday. The number of deaths tying Tuesday's uh, official state count, which I just mentioned to you. And now Dr. Burks is involved. Dr. Burks is specifically calling out the state of Nevada, the lead, one of the leading doctors on the White House Coronavirus Task Force. She said that the state of Nevada needs to take aggressive steps to address the rising number of cases. Uh, on the same day of the warning, Las Vegas announced plans to increase testing and step up the city's monitoring of businesses to ensure compliance with public health rules over fears that a worsening coronavirus situation in Clark County could lead to another shutdown. And I actually tend to believe that might actually happen. Burks also said that cities such as Las Vegas were lagging behind in lowering test positivity and that it was critical that those cities be aggressive about mitigation efforts, including contract, uh, or I'm sorry, contact tracing. So this is a big deal, and I want to read you, uh, and then I'll get your thoughts on this, J.D., but I want to read to you uh, the statement of, a, of an ER doctor right here in Las Vegas. Now, as I told you, I know some people in this town that are on the front lines, and I gave you some of that information that they gave me on Monday, You know, such as all the people in Oregon and in Arizona that are flooding the hospitals here in Las Vegas that are sick, that are positive. Well, listen to what this ER doctor in Las Vegas said to the Daily Beast, quote, I would say in the last month we've completely overwhelmed we are completely overwhelmed with COVID-19 patients and our hospital is running out of space. Again, this is a Las Vegas emergency room doctor who told the Delhi Beast not only are we overwhelmed and terrified, but based on the numbers for the rest of the country, it's only going to get worse for us. He went on, and he went on to say this is uncharted waters and it seems like everyone in Las Vegas has been too lax about the pandemic. He also went on today stressing that local officials have not taken the necessary precautions to ensure they stopped the virus in its tracks months ago. He said he, this doctor said he had worked over 100 hours this week alone. How dangerous is that? I don't care what job you're doing. 100 hours in a week? The fear that knowing that the worst of the virus is yet to come, according to this doctor. He also said that some of the hospital beds are being taken up by patients from out of state, as I just mentioned, like Arizona and Oregon. <clears throat> Uh, so this is this is this is serious stuff, folks. And this isn't one of those situations where I'm going on the air and saying, uh, you know, just trying to scare people. This is bad. We're in the red zone, according to the White House. Now you have Dr. Burks coming forward saying that Steve Sislak and people in this state need to be more aggressive in fighting this thing. We have ER doctors, some of whom I've talked to personally, who have told me literally the exact same thing that this doctor told the Daily Beast. I shared this information with you guys on Monday. I know people that are in the front lines that are fighting this virus, that are trying to save lives. This is consistent to what some of my friends have told me. This is not good. So, J.D., what is your reaction to all the information that I've just shared? Well, everywhere I go, I see masks being used. I see mitigation efforts being put into play. So, it, again, it's very surprising to me that all these cases are rising considering everybody is wearing masks. And if masks work, then why are cases rising as fast as they are? Well, also, also, I, I did a little bit of research. Can I respond to, to that, though, and then I'll let you – is that cool? Because you just asked me a question, right? No, it was, it was, a, it was a rhetorical question oh. that I kind of asked my – Well, in 15 seconds, I'll well, just I, – I said, said if masks work, you know, question mark, yeah. you know, comma – in, Why are cases exploding considering everybody sure, has been wearing masks? I'll, and they, and they have. Everywhere I go, I see masks being worn. And it's been that way for an entire month, okay, so, if not longer than that. So I mean, in, every single place I go. In 15 seconds, I'll say this. And I think fine. I think you will agree with me. No one has ever said masks are 100% foolproof. Uh, so that's number one. Well, yeah, but uh, 100%, on, 100% on, on. In, you know, in the beginning, in March... Our cases were a fifth or a sixth okay, of this, but, but, and nobody was wearing masks. But I was gonna, so now that people are wearing masks, suddenly uh, there's a extreme uptick in masks, cases? Masks have been much more aggressive in the last several weeks. But as you know, in the last several months— It's been at least six weeks, Okay, Brian. well, I, I disagree with you, number one. And number two, uh, I will also say that no one's ever said that masks are not foolproof, but it is a given fact that masks can help prevent spread of the virus. Well, uh, that, that doesn't change the numbers uh, again, I just gave well, you. No, if that's the case— then again, when you know back in March and April, 
why was why were their numbers not exploding when nobody was wearing in, uh, masks or uh, very few people were in wearing April, masks? In April, in uh, April, many of the numbers were exploding. Not I don't like know what this. you're talking about. No, no, not like this. Uh, in April, uh, the death I, toll I think, was very think, high. No, I think the most. Do you know why the death toll was high in April? Because people were dying from the coronavirus. Actually, that's. Well, you could say that, but here's the deal. <laughs> well, that, yeah, well, well, that's just, what happened. Well, just listen to this. This, this is on SD. This, this is on the, the, the Southern Nevada Health District website. In February of 2020, there were 200 deaths due to influenza. In March, there were 60. In April, there were three. In Fe- in April of 2018, there were 51. Mm-hmm. In April of 2019, there were 89. So can I why, respond to that? Why suddenly? Did deaths just drop off from the flu? And let, let me respond to that. Let me. Well, let me why just, is there only okay. three total deaths sure. from the flu? I'll respond to that. In, in a flu season I, I in will, Clark County. I will gladly respond to that. Let me just give out a quick statistic, if I may. Sure. And this is a sure. fact. Uh, in the last six months, more people have died. Uh, twice as many people have died from the coronavirus uh, than in eight months of the flu season. So I just want to. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that to everybody. And let me repeat that again because it's a very important stat for people that want to compare the coronavirus to the flu. In the last six months, twice as many people have died from the coronavirus than in eight months of the flu. So I just want to get that uh, straightforward out to people that, again, want to compare this to the flu. In 2017, 18, there was a very aggressive flu season. It was six months long. It was not eight months long. It was six months long. I'm not comparing it to 2017. And about 80,000 people died. I'm not comparing it uh, to uh, 2017, but uh, even with your case of 80,000. What I'm saying is why suddenly are flu deaths and hepatitis deaths were actually down 80% as well. Why? Why why are those deaths down in April and COVID deaths are exploding in April, right around the time that the CARES Act is passed? Well, I can answer that. And states are literally being compensated for reporting COVID deaths. Okay, well, I'm not going to go through uh, conspiracy theories. I'm not going to do that. Brian, Brian, that's not a conspiracy theory. You're making an insinuation that that the numbers again are overblown for money, and I'm not going to do that. what What I'm saying is that people that would have died from the flu are being called COVID deaths. Okay, well, there's no evidence of that. And if that's happening, well, no, I, I just told you the evidence. So it's, you're it's saying actually, that it's actually I just had our social media guy put it on our official Twitter page. You can you can you're actually see that the graph. People are dying the from graph, the flu the and they graph, don't have the coronavirus. The graph will and show you. Lying. The graph will show you that in 2018 of April mm-hmm. in Clark County there were 51 deaths. In 20 in 2019 of April there were 85 deaths. In 2020 of April there were three flu deaths. Okay, so. What do you mean? Okay, so so we're talking about fifty. Why why would deaths drop okay, so that hold, much? So, so hold on a why, second. Why would the flu just suddenly so disappear? Okay, so let me respond. So, so my okay. question is: okay, well, on a I national to what you just that's said. happening here okay. on a national scale, and how many other counties did that take place? Right. And how inflated right. are those actual? So, so let me respond. To and again, what you this just, is this isn't okay. just coming from. Let me know when I can respond. I want nowhere, res- Brian. I want to respond. This is, to this what is you legitimate data. Okay, I get on the Southern Nevada Health District website. Okay, I get it. Let me, if I may, let me respond to. The 30 things you just said. Uh, I'll try to respond to as many as I can. Uh, so we're talking about 2017, 50 deaths from influenza. Uh, now we're talking about three deaths from influenza. 140,000 people have died from this virus. Okay, We're talking about 40 or 50 cases of flu deaths. And that's your big issue right now. But I'll tell you what my big issue is. Not the fact that flu deaths dropped from 53 to 3. No, 80, uh, 85, okay, 85 okay, to 3. All right, okay, right. I, I understand what you said. Um, that's here's 90, my issue. That, that's almost all 95%. Right. Okay, okay, so you're thinking about from 2017, something went from 80 flu deaths now to 3 deaths. That's your concern. I'll tell you what my concern is. My concern is the fact that the White House is very concerned what is going on in the state of Nevada right now. My concern is you have ER doctors, many of whom I've talked to personally on the phone, one who's in the Daily Beast right now that's that's working 100 hours a week that is telling me not only is testing up, but the hospitals can't take it. Arizona hospitals can't take all these people that are sick. It's happening in Oregon. It's happening in other states. And now we're getting all these cases. I'm concerned about people dying. I'm concerned about people getting sick. Now, if you want to be concerned about why flu cases and flu deaths three years ago were 80, and now they're already down to three, you're entitled to do that. But my concern is the same concern of Dr. Burks and Mike Pence's task force, which says that Las Vegas and Nevada are in the red zone. What does that mean? They're saying that all restaurants, gyms, and restaurants should be closed down while there is an uptick and while more and more people are getting sick. I just gave you a statement 
from an ER doctor in Las Vegas who said and echoed the exact same things that some of my personal friends have told me earlier in the week. A personal friend of mine told me that she literally checked in 2,000 people from Arizona into these hospitals on her computer, and they're expecting 15 to 20,000 more in the coming weeks, and Las Vegas can't handle it. You have a doctor in the Daily Beast, an ER doctor, who works here in Las Vegas that is saying he's working 100 hours a week dealing with COVID patients, not just people who have tested positive for COVID, people who are very sick, who need to be hospitalized from COVID. And now we have the lead doctor in the White House addressing Nevada specifically, saying that they need to be more aggressive in increasing testing and stepping up the city's monitoring of businesses to ensure compliance. This is serious, folks. The number to call. I'll tell you this right now, the... The ER wait times at Aliante is six minutes. At the Lakes, it's two minutes. At Mountain View Hospital, it's six minutes. At Southern Hills Hospital Medical Center, it's three minutes. And at Sunrise Hospital Medical Center, it's eight minutes. And Sunrise Children's Hospital, it's three minutes. So your point? There, there's not exactly a long wait time at the ERs right now. Whoever needs treatment is okay. getting it relatively, well, okay. actually extremely quickly. So I wasn't referring to wait time. Wait time means absolutely nothing to Well, me. if these hospitals are overloaded, that means that they're probably having okay. a hard time getting new people in the doors. So, so I'll say, uh, I'll finish my statement. Uh, okay. My, my concern is not wait time. My concern is how many people are actually hospitalized Do they have the necessary doctors and the people that can help these COVID patients? And why are we getting all these patients from out of state? My concern is not 80 people who might have died in the flu in 2017, and why is there only three people now? My concern is how many people that are sick? Do we have enough beds? Do we have enough units to help these people? Are doctors not working 100 uh, 100 hours a week? My concern are are, why is this this virus spreading and why are so many people getting sick? Should those cases from from Oregon and and Arizona, should those deaths be counted on our death toll, Brian? Well, again, that's one of your concerns. That's no, not I'm, I'm just asking okay, you that and question. I, and I'm answering it by saying this. Because the, and I'm the, the, the hot it, zone is, is, and based, I'm answering is based on a lot of different and things. I'm, and I'm answering it by saying this. Okay. I don't care if the governor of a state is Republican or Democrat, and I don't care where these people die. What I care about is if they die. I don't want them to die. I could give two craps if you tell me they died in Nevada. Well, you should on, care about that because, let me Brian, finish. Let me right finish. now, let me fin- nationwide— you, let me you are twice as likely to die in okay. a democratic gotta, governed okay. state well, here we go again. than a republican okay. governed state. I understand state. that. that, that, that I is, understand again, that, that's okay. data. That's All science. Right, that's facts. Finish. I understand that's your concern, and you're very concerned about whether it was a republican governor or or or, or, or a democratic governor. But I can tell you right now, I'm very confident in saying this because I know people, sadly, who have died from this virus. And trust me, JD, their families could give two craps. Whether the, Repu- whether the governor is a Republican or a Democrat, you know what they care about? That their family member is dead, okay? They don't, the first thing they think about is not, oh, boy, well, my family member died in this state, and that governor is a Democrat or Republican. I don't care. You shouldn't care. And certainly the people who have lost loved ones don't care. This should not be about politics. We want the least number of people dying from this virus. We want the least number of people getting sick from this virus. And you know what? The virus doesn't care if you're a Republican or a Democrat. They don't care that st- the virus doesn't care that Steve Sislak happens to be a Democrat. Just like the virus doesn't care that DeSantis is a Republican. I don't want people dying in Florida. I don't want people dying in Nevada. I don't want any innocent people dying.